This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the First Presbyterian Church in South St. Paul on this Palm Sunday. Even though we can't be together worshiping in the sanctuary, what a blessing these virtual worship services have been. We've been able to reach out to so many members, some of our members who have been homebound or who couldn't get to the church for whatever reason are now able to worship with us virtually, and it has just been a fantastic blessing. Thank you for those of you who've reached out to us just to let us know how absolutely grateful you are for these services during these times. It's also been a blessing that we've been able to reach our members who live out of state, our snowbirds in Florida and Arizona, some of our members, one at least in Louisiana, in Texas, and today we are fortunate enough to have with us as our lector, our former youth director, Eli Sanchez, coming to us all the way from San Diego, California. I also know that many of you have been sharing the worship services with family and friends, and in that way, we've reached people all over the globe with our worship services and letting them know about the wonderful ministry that we do here at First Presbyterian Church. Since uh, Holy Week, we are in Holy Week. It may not seem like it, but we will be having services this Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday. So I hope that you will join us for that. We have some fantastic music and other surprises for you in those services. And I can promise you, uh, we will be celebrating the resurrection uh, in one week no matter what happens and no matter what anybody tells us, Christ will be risen. He will be risen indeed. I hope that you've been able to uh, get your palms out. I know that there were these palms in particular were attached to the Wednesday email. So uh, if you haven't been able to either get these palms or make your own, or who knows, maybe you actually have palms in your house for whatever reason that would be. But if you wanted to, if you haven't got them ready, you could pause right now if you're watching this recorded, color your palms and get them ready for uh, the children's time because you're going to need them. Our worship services are always on YouTube at FPC SSP, or you can get them on Facebook at our page, First Presbyterian Church in South St. Paul. And beginning this week, you can also find them on Town Square Television in South St. Paul. Uh, we will be uh, sending out to you information regarding the exact channels and times that those are on as we become aware of them. So watch your congregational emails and uh, hopefully we'll be able to reach some of you by phone calls who might not get those emails. We have heard from neighbors uh, that even though Minnesota Food Share Month March got extended into April, uh, they are no longer receiving food but they are receiving donations. They need our donations. And so you can send a check to the church. We're still uh, collecting the mail there and, and taking care of those checks. Just mention on the memo line, Neighbors, First Presbyterian Church, South St. Paul. You can mail them directly to Neighbors. And if you put First Presbyterian Church, South St. Paul on the memo line, you'll still get credit for it through the church. There's also, you can still go to the church website and go to the donations button where you can designate giving to neighbors uh, directly that way as well. Although the building is closed, we're not meeting in our building, just a reminder that the church is not the building. We are the church and we remain open. We're having meetings. We're uh, having uh, the youth group is still meeting, the men's group on Thursday mornings, the Bible studies, the church remains open. And a reminder, as the church is still open, that we are here for you. Whatever you need, hopefully uh, you've been receiving phone calls from our deacons and all of the other number of volunteers who've stepped up. We're here for you. If you need specific prayers or anything, please let the church know because we want to remain open and we want to be here for you. And now let us begin our time of worship with a moment of centering silence.
let us continue to call ourselves to worship. Jesus was beloved by the poor and the outcast. But he was a threat to people with power. Jesus stood against the temple. So he was a threat to the Sadducees. Jesus healed on the Sabbath and ate with sinners. So he was a threat to the Pharisees. Jesus took the titles of Lord, Son of God, and King. Those were the Caesar's titles. He was a threat to the government. Jesus came without violence. Yet he disturbed the peace. Jesus came proclaiming the kingdom of God. And the kingdoms of this world were frightened. Lord, help us to love your kingdom more than the kingdoms of this world. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in our opening hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. If we say we have no need of God's forgiveness, we're lying to ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin together, we are assured of God's forgiveness. Let us join together in prayer. God of each new day, we confess that we join the crowds who insult and alienate and blame. Forgive us for listening too intently to all the voices of the world that clamor for our attention. Make us bold to speak up for the downtrodden, the oppressed, and those captive to their fears. O God who sustains the weak, open our hearts to see each other as you see us. Open our ears to hear your voice and give us Christ-like steadfastness in living our faith, serving others, and bringing rest to the weary. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 
Let us join together in the assurance of God's grace. Laying aside judgment, God offers us redemption. Setting aside anger, God embraces us with love. Letting go of grief, God pours living water upon us. This is the good news. God's steadfast love endures forever. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who brings us the kingdom of God. And now would our children gather around the screen for our time together. I know on a regular Palm Sunday, we might use this time to go up and down the aisles of the sanctuary, waving our palms, maybe hitting one or two people in the head along the way. Uh, but we're still going to do that. Nothing has changed, so I hope that you've uh, grabbed your palm branches that either you've created yourself or for those of you fortunate enough to have palm trees growing in your homes that you can just take a branch off of those. And we're going to take an opportunity to march through our own homes, uh, waving our palm branches, hitting siblings, parents in the head with them. Uh, I can't tell. I might get a couple phone calls but waving them as wildly as they did that first Palm Sunday, because right now we have a special treat for you all as Jill Johnson, along with Piper and Zoe, are gonna lead us all in a song for Palm Sunday. Good morning. We are going to teach everybody a song to sing on this Palm Sunday. The words go like this. Let me say them first and then everybody join me. Ho, 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 Hosanna. Ho, 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 Hosanna. Ha, ha, hallelujah. Ha, ha, hallelujah. He, 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 he saved me. He, 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 he saved me. I've got the joy of the Lord. I've got the joy of the Lord. Join us along and sing at home. And here we go. Wait a minute, let me get us a chord. Ready? Ho, 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 Hosanna. Ha, ha, hallelujah. He, 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 he saves me. I've got the joy of the Lord. Ho, 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 Hosanna. Thank you, Jill, and Piper, and Zoe. Will you fold your hands and pray with me now? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for Palm Sunday. Thank you for the opportunity to be together. And thank you for Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen.
please join me in the prayer for illumination. Eternal God, whose word silences the shouts of the mighty, quiet within us every voice but your own, speak to us through the example of Jesus Christ, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may receive grace to show Christ's love in lives given to servants. Amen. Today's reading comes to us from the book of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage, they had reached Bethphage. Bethphage. At the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this. The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This, this took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had the disciples went and did just as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread those on the road. Crowds that went ahead of him and that all that followed were shouting. Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were all saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Once there were four children whose names were Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy. This story is about something that happened to them when they were sent away from London during the war because of the air raids. They were sent to the house of an old professor who lived in the heart of the country 10 miles from the nearest railway station. During World War II, more than 3.5 million children were evacuated from London and other cities into the countryside to keep them safe from anticipated bombings. The campaign was known as Operation Pied Piper. Some ended up in the homes of relatives, but many were sent to stay with complete strangers. In one of these latter circumstances, three young sisters, Margaret, Mary, and Catherine, were sent to the home of a professor of English literature. That professor, was author C.S. Lewis, who, like many of his compatriots, opened his home to evacuee children during the war. One can only imagine what those little girls must have thought, the bewilderment with which these city children must have encountered a big, quiet house with a bookish bachelor professor eyeing them like strange creatures from another world. And the professor was equally baffled by the three young sisters as he wrote in a letter to his brother about these modern children's lack of imagination and their inability to keep themselves amused. Lewis's response to this unique moment in history and his time spent with Margaret, Mary, and Catherine would come in the form of a book that would capture the imaginations of generations of children myself included. Over the decades, how many of us, millions, have yearned to wander through the back of a wardrobe, a closet, and experience the taste of enchanted Turkish delight, dreamt of a magic cordial that would cure wounds with just one drop, happily imagine tea time with a fawn and a romp on the back of a lion, and were haunted by the sound of a witch's henchman sharpening a knife. That book, in which four children, the real Margaret, Mary, and Catherine being replaced by the fictional P. 
Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy Pevensey, enter a magical kingdom by the way of a seemingly ordinary armoire, was and still is the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. I hadn't thought about this book and the other Chronicles of Narnia for a long time until I saw a post on Facebook by our own Jill Johnson of Auto Heart fame back on March 24th. In it, she mentions that she has started reading the book to her daughters, Piper and Zoe, of Front Stoop fame. One chapter at bedtime each night. She wrote, It is so perfect right now. The kids in the book are sent to the country to avoid the Blitz in World War II. No school, no friends, left to their own devices. They end up, of course, having magical adventures and learning about themselves and growing in ways that they didn't know were possible. These are my wishes for our own kids in this time, for all our kids in this time. It is my opinion, though I hardly believe I am alone here, that to teach our children to be able to imagine new worlds, different worlds, may be one of the greatest gifts that we can give to them. If we are going to hope for a better world, place our trust in that better world, work to create that better world together, we must first be able to imagine it, to imagine its possibility. The Palm, story, the Palm Sunday story is the story of two different worlds, contradictory worlds, coming into direct conflict with one another. The time is just before Passover, and devout Jews from all over are coming to Jerusalem and the temple to present their offerings and celebrate this holiest of days. Passover is a time of remembrance, remembering that they, that we, were once slaves in Egypt and how God liberated them from the oppression of the Pharaoh's regime. The Roman government was nervous about so many Jewish people filled with these ideas of liberation gathered together in the city. So they sent the governor, Pontius Pilate, and a multitude of extra soldiers there to keep the peace to squash any sense of rebellion and insurrection. They entered Jerusalem with great pomp and circumstance, making a show of their military power as a warning to the people of what would and could happen if they planned on making any trouble. On the other side of town, a lone man, the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee, rode in on a donkey, making a show of his power the power of humility and servanthood, of what would be the power of sacrifice and love, while those who followed and hoped that he was the Messiah, the one sent by God to redeem them, to liberate them, to inaugurate God's world, lined the sp street, spreading their cloaks on the road and cutting palm branches from the trees, spreading them on the road, as well as waving them. Two worlds worlds of difference. One built on fear and violence, greed and cruelty, and sustained by the thirst for political and religious self-preservation by those in positions of authority at the cost of the poor and most vulnerable. The other, a world built on the understanding that everyone is a beloved child of God, worthy of the same dignity and respect the same justice and opportunity, an equitable, egalitarian world of mercy, compassion, peace, and above all else, love, the divine love which is God. Worlds of difference. The world we live in and God's world. The world God calls us to imagine, given the revelation of Jesus in Scripture as our model, and the world God calls us to create together. One of my favorite lines from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is simply, they open a door and enter a world. When Jesus enters Jerusalem through the Golden Gate, the gate on the eastern side of Jerusalem, or as the psalmist writes, the gate of thanksgiving, it is so much more than one man entering a city. It is a world 
God's world breaking into our own. They, we open a door through a gate and enter a world and a world enters us. This is the meaning of Palm Sunday, that God's world in all its quiet humility and compassion, the belief that we are all beloved children of God, created in God's image, unique and beautiful, a world rooted in love, a world lived out in love, is breaking in, has broken in to this world. Like the Pevensey children, may we too open a door and enter a world, the door into God's world. Friends, I don't think it is all that much of a stretch to say that we live in a world that too often seems built on fear and violence, greed and cruelty, and sustained by the thirst for political and religious self-preservation by those in positions of authority at the cost of the poor and most vulnerable. And like Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy, living at a time of global crisis, we have all been sent away inside our own homes, as opposed to the home of some strange English liter literature professor, thank God, to keep us safe and to challenge us, as Lewis complained of modern children, to keep ourselves amused and exercise our imaginations. To not only imagine a new world, a different world, God's world, but to shape and create and sustain this world through our own acts of humility, compassion, mercy, justice for all our brothers and sisters, especially those members of our human family who are putting their lives at risk every day for the rest of us. I started a list of who all those people were, but it got too long, and I didn't want to leave any group of people out. Bottom line, we are all in this together, whether on the front line carrying on the essential work of society or doing our part by staying home and caring for children and parents and one another. More and more each day, wherever one looks, if you are looking, there are signs of God's world breaking into this world. No doubt there are also still signs of the old world, the world where we all have had some hand in creating and sustaining, either through our actions or our inactions, our complicity, our complacency, and our apathy. Signs of fear and blame, signs of putting me before us, of hoarding, of thinking you, we are somehow above guidelines and executive orders, Signs of privilege and exclusivity, including pastors who continue to hold services in their buildings. But the signs are also there, more numerous and more powerful, of service and sacrifice, of humility and generosity, of creativity and imagination, of putting others before ourselves, of CEOs donating their salaries to their employees, of artists and actors and musicians offering up their talent for free, of vacuum salespeople creating masks out of vacuum cleaner bags, of members of this congregation making the time to reach out to one another by phone and video conferencing, of, of, of. The signs are endless. May you be a sign. May we be signs, revelations of God's world. May each one of us be that one who comes in the name of the Lord, humble, compassionate, working for justice and peace among all God's children, embodying and sharing the divine love which is God until it fills the entire world. God's world is breaking in, continues to break in, open the door and enter this world that we by the unmerited gift of divine grace being poured into us and into the world through us may reveal it for all the world to see and for all the world to become imagine that 
and to God alone be all the glory. Amen. Let us lift our hearts and bow our heads together in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we are filled with questions as we join you in worship this day. We look to you to ease our souls, to cradle our needs, and to hold our doubts. In these, in these days we ask, can our hope live? And you whisper to us, look to the buds on the trees eager to burst. Notice the flowers poking their heads out of the dirt. Watch the children chalking spring on the sidewalks. And we see how you love us, God of steadfast love. In these moments we wonder, can our compassion survive? And you tell us, wipe the tears of a worried father over his son's illness. Ease the weariness of a mother facing a long shift at work. Shop for the neighbor who has no family. And we see how you love us, our resurrection and our life. In the shadows of each night, we cry out, can our love last? And you sing to us, witness the touch of a wife on her husband's papery skin. Pay attention to the birds who sing a tune our hearts long to hear. Share the words you are given to offer to the empty hearted. And we see how you love us, breath of our souls. Beyond all our questions, Lord our God, we give you thanks. Your love is constant and devoted to us. Your hope is unfailing in caring for us. Through healthcare workers and researchers, through teachers offering online lessons, essential workers who brave each day to fulfill their responsibilities, and therapists available around the clock. We give you thanks, O God that justice is the gate you open to all. You hear the cries of those who are forgotten, those who sleep rough in emptied streets, those who are most vulnerable around us, those who have no family to care for them. We give you thanks that you come to bring us new life. Hear us now as we join our voices together and pray as one the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Part of our experience of worship together each week is the dedication of our tithes, our gifts, and our offerings. Even when we are away from the church building, we are still the church, and we remain grateful for your contributions to help carry on all the ministry we do. Please consider making a gift at this time by writing a check and sending it in the mail to the address on your screen, or by going to the church website listed here and finding the Donate button on the right-hand side of the front page. Thank you for sharing.
Join me now for our prayer of dedication. Blessed one, you have given us the gift of enduring steadfast love. Multiply these gifts so that we may share the magnitude of your joy-filled message throughout our community and world. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Please join me in the closing hymn, Ride on, ride on in majesty.
sign. May we be signs. Revelations of God's world. May each of us be that one who comes in the name of the Lord, humble, compassionate, working for justice and peace among all God's children, embodying and sharing the divine love which is God until it fills the entire world. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and abide in you from this day forward and forevermore. Amen.